How much is it? Two thousand. To sleep it. In our belief, uh, when in case we found something, let's say like mobile phone or some gold, we check, we pick the the thing, the stuff. Uh, in return, we give, we put the money. Yeah. So I think we take something, then we have to give something. We believe like magic here. So just in case to open maybe like black magic or something. Oh. That's the whole belief, but yeah. it's still we still do it. We still believe it. So there are numerous unique things that can be a little controversial and put travelers into shock. And we have always been excited to share these with you. So here are our top 10 first impressions about Bali that blow our mind away as foreigners while traveling here for the first time. If you've ever been to Bali, you ever been driving down the road and you see the, guy that, the guys that are dressed in like traditional clothes, wearing sunglasses and that like black and white checkered sarong. You mainly see these people in religious activities and they're blocking the roads and things like that. Well, they're actually police and they're local police and they can write you a ticket and they're not dressed in their normal blue police uniform. They don't actually have a uniform other than the traditional clothes. So. One of our friends, Dell, is actually riding down the road and uh, he ran into a little bit of a problem. That's crazy. They actually ended up giving him a ticket and it was for not wearing a helmet. We see them more than we see the national like police in the real uniform. So that's why at first I thought that why there are not a lot of traffic police, police. or the police in Bali at all. The thing that always sticks out and it's public transportation. But when you're in Bali, you don't really see that, which is probably a good thing because of the fact that the roads are so narrow, you don't see these huge buses most of the time. But they do have a public transportation and they're basically like little minivans that, you know, instead of having big buses for public transportation, they have little minivans. So basically down south, we have never seen, but we experienced this once when they were in Kianya, I believe, Kind of like the way from Ubud to the east to the north that we start to see like more of local white and traditional house and then yeah. we start to see the Bemos. But in touristy area, none of them. <laughs> I never see public transportation. Some of the friends that don't ride a motorbike, then the only choice is that they have to order Gojek or Grab. Which is kind of like a controversial topic in Ubud or in Bali in general because they have like the mafia, the taxi mafia, where they like, yeah. they don't really allow taxis to pick you up in certain areas if you're ordering them from an app. Yeah. They want you to specifically use the local taxi drivers. Yeah, from the story that I have heard, it says like some people say that the Grab driver, like sometimes they got beaten up by the taxi Local taxi mafia. driver. Yeah. One thing you have to re also remember is that there is no Uber in Bali. Bali. It happened in 2018 that Uber has sold their Southeast Asia operation to Grab. So no Uber, only Grab and Gojek. All right, so we just want to take a quick second and jump in here and thank the sponsor for today's video. It's Audible. If you've been watching the channel for a while, whenever we're traveling, relaxing on the beach, I'm always listening to like an audio book and I actually can't really get over the Gary V's crushing it. It really, you know, holds me accountable teaches me new things every time I listen to it. So I've recently started into their Audible Originals. They have a huge selection that's created by different writers and literature, even theater and comedy. So you have everything you could possibly imagine. And you can actually get your first audiobook for free, plus two Audible Originals, when you try Audible for 30 days. You can visit audible.com slash divertliving, or you can text code divertliving to 500-500. So well, if you are from USA, then you can easily text code Diver Living to 500 500. But if you are from the other continent or the other countries, you can basically just go to audible.com slash Diver Living. Also, one fascinating thing is that everywhere you go, it will make you wonder if this is the actual house or this is the temple. Do you remember the laundry place in Ubud? Yeah. We have to actually step inside their house in order to um, get, our laundry done. get our laundry done. And inside the house, they have their own temple, they have their own shrine, 
and they have like the pagodas in there yeah so it's like really really unique they normally do the household stuff with the same principle as doing the the temple the temple culture is very vivid in bali especially if you go up north and actually not only is called as the land of god but also bali is also known as the land of 10,000 temples there are more than 10,000 temples in this small island which is really impressive Well, in Bali, it's a little bit different. They tend to burn their trash, and it's right on the side of the road. So they either burn very early in the morning or very late at night. Mm. And they do, they burn everything. They burn leaves, plastic, paper, they burn All everything. Together. And it sometimes can create, you know, some smoky roads feeling, that eerie feeling when you're driving down the road, but you will notice it. And it's just something that kind of really stuck out to me. It's not like, crazy bad like it's not like overpowering like where you're riding through like trash smoke or it's super polluted or anything like that most of the time you don't really see stop signs you don't see any road signs or even red lights it's very rare unless you're in the city you're gonna run into problems with google not being able to calculate the traffic correctly and in most cases it's because the roads are so thin like honestly, most of the time they're like single lane roads, but there's like cars coming this way and bikes and cars going this way, even though it's a single lane road. Yeah, it's that, it's that way, yeah. No way that we're gonna be able to take motorbike up. Okay, I'm taking the motorbike up. Are you sure? Basically, if you're using Google Maps, it's gonna take you down these like crazy shortcuts through like rice paddies and fields and puddles and crazy roads and actually sometimes you basically feel like you need a dirt bike because they're like cobblestone roads and there's like giant holes and then there's like cars half in the rice paddy trying to drive down the road you don't have to arrive the island and come up with a question of where can i see or find the true culture of Bali. You will see that Bali have captivating culture scene. As a first time traveling to Bali, you will notice some of very distinct things that we have only seen in Bali. For example, the statue wearing the sarong and um, the three umbrellas. Yeah, the three umbrella that symbolize the god, or what they call penjo, which is like the tall decorative poles that can be seen outside Balinese house. This one is happening during the certain religious holiday and that are built to symbolize the dominance over the devil you will see huge it. amazing statues yeah. like in the middle of the road it's really incredible to see and it's really nice to ride around the island because you see so many different types of these statues yeah that you can really get an influence on how vivid the culture is here you will see that they have the setup of the daily offering which they call it the sanang um, in the tray, it made up of the banana leaves and filled with uh, a bunch of like flowers, rice, coin, food. Sometimes you will see cigarettes. So each tray kind of like different, which I don't know what make the difference in it. Yeah, if you do know the difference between the trays and the offerings, please let us know below because we would absolutely love to know. So sometimes some people might accidentally step on it and we have heard that it might cause you a really big issue like spiritually so as you ride down the road like we said you might run into like the little parade or celebration if you are going to bali for the first time this is definitely something that's gonna excite you and uh kind of give you a little bit of a shock i always feel like there's some festival going on yeah. <laughs> all the time in bali because of all these things and when i got that first time i feel like wow there must be a huge event like a giant the... wedding or something yeah, that's what definitely. it looks like yeah definitely so when we were actually first in bali our first year we went to go stop and meet Ta's friends from college. And when we had pulled up to the hotel, of course the security guard, first thing he said to me was, Oh, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. And he's talking because he knows I'm American, clearly. Well, when he was talking to me, he stated that Donald Trump had recently built a resort in Bali. And I instantly said, you know, popped in my head, Well, Trump Tower. Well, no, it's actually not Trump, Trump Tower. Trump Tower, though? Well, it's like a famous high-rise that is owned by Donald Trump throughout the United States. 
and it's actually not Trump Tower, he continued to state that you're actually not allowed to have high rises in Bali. Oh, the Trump Tower is the high rise? Yeah. Uh, so he I... actually stated that you're not allowed to have high rises within Bali. Oh. And from what we have heard from the local is uh, because they don't allow you to have the high rise that go above the coconut tree level. You'll see people smoking everywhere. Um, mainly the men. Like for example, if you go to the restaurant, small restaurant, you will see that not only they sell food, they have the cigarette as well to sell. It's, that, it's really kind of surprised me and the aspect that when you step into the temple or when you go to some place that it's kind of like sacred, not only women that has to wear the sarong, but man has to wear the sarong. As well, yeah. And that is a sign of masculinity. I saw it all the time as you're traveling through Bali, riding down the roads, whether it be in ceremonies, in the temple, or even like some of the little kids when they're going to school, they have the flower tucked in their ear. And they have, and they wear the sarong. Yeah, but I never really knew what it was until we actually looked it up and asked one of our friends that is a local in Bali. And he said, yeah, normally they'll wear the sarong and they'll tuck the flower behind their ear and it shows masculinity. Yeah. All right, so one thing that really surprised me every time thinking of Bali is that Bali is kind of like the one, they call it in English, one stop shop or one chop stop. One stop shop. One stop shop that you go there and there's no way that you will find something that you dislike. There might be way that you feel like the, this area is not kind of like fit your lifestyle, but you always be able to find the other part of the island that will totally blow your mind, blow your mind away, and you will totally love it. We know one person. He come from India. Oh, he is actually from Germany. You remember that guy? Yeah. He go to India in Himalayas, and he kind of like love like the spiritual vibe and like he was meditation. Stuck in the mountains for yeah. so long. Yeah, and then he come to Changu. He said, "This is my first time in Bali." He come and he stay in Changu, and then we go out to like explore like the beach vibe and the surf culture and hipster vibe. And then he was like, "This is not quite my style." Yeah, then, he's like, this isn't for me. Yeah, and then the next day he go to Ubud. Yeah, so I mean, even if you don't like, you know, the south, the beach, the partying, the surfer vibe, you just go to Ubud. And if you, you know, don't like the congestion in Ubud and the amount of tourists, even though it is more relaxed, mountainy feeling, you can head north. So, one fascinating thing about Bali is that either you are a backpacker or either you are kind of like travel luxury for traveler. luxury, everyone can come to Bali and feel like. At home comfortable or at peace. Yeah. yeah so Bali has everything for everyone that's so fascinating so let us know in the comments below if these things kind of gave you a shock as well and surprise to you mm -hmm. so we hope this video is helpful for you um, the purpose of us making this video is kind of like to tell you our experience basically we didn't mean to criticize or judge Bali in general we just want to tell you our experience um, and this will help you in kind of like managing your expectation before you arrive the island especially if you your are first timer so if you are going to Bali and you want to check out our guide you can check in the description box below we have a full free downloadable checklist for your packing essentials, your must know, and even you know some written articles that you can read through to prep you for different locations and different places in Bali. So let us know in the comments below if you have anything else that really Shock you. shocked you. And uh, <laughs> we'd love to know what you guys think. So thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. You got his my fix? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you guys ready? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go for it. That's crazy, I can't believe it too. It's pretty good. I should be a fucking baseball player. Definitely.